welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. In recent years, far-right ideologies have gained significant traction worldwide, leading to increased xenophobia, anti-immigrant sentiments, and social unrest. This surge has been fueled by politicians, media outlets, billionaires, and underlying ideological beliefs. The recent riots across the UK, particularly triggered by misinformation following a stabbing incident in Southport, exemplifies the dangerous consequences of such ideologies. Far-right and conservative politicians have played a pivotal role in fostering anti-immigrant and xenophobic sentiments. In the UK, figures like Nigel Farage and Suella Beverman have used inflammatory rhetoric to stoke fear about migration. Farage, a former UK IP leader and current head of Reform UK, has consistently blamed immigrants for economic and social issues, calling for extreme measures to control immigration. Riverman has echoed these sentiments, describing peaceful protesters as hate marchers and promoting the idea of an invasion by asylum seekers. These politicians exploit deep-seated fears and prejudices, positioning themselves as defenders of national identity. This us versus them narrative divides society and creates an environment ripe for far-right ideologies to flourish. Media outlets, particularly those 24-7 news networks and certain tabloids, significantly amplify far-right rhetoric. Networks like GB News, Talk TV, and newspapers that come in paper form or online, such as the Daily Mail and the Telegraph, often highlight crimes committed by mi migrants or immigrants while downplaying similar offenses by native-born citizens. This selective reporting creates a distorted perception of reality and fuels anti-immigrant sentiments. For example, following the recent stabbing in Southport, misinformation quickly spread, falsely claiming the attacker was an immigrant. Far-right groups seized on the falsehood to mobilize anti-Muslim and anti-immigrant protest. Despite police conforming that the suspect was born in Britain. This incident underscores the media's role in spreading misinformation and exacerbating social tensions. But it's not just these media outlets. It's also the very mainstream ones that allow one-sided reporting and opinion pieces. They allow hateful rhetoric to be broadcast on their morning shows. And do you think that the hate campaign against Meghan Markle has nothing to do with this? Think again. The UK media, with the blessing of the royal family, a weak and spineless king and his heir, endorsed directly or indirectly the hate-fueled stories filled with racism and misogyny for over seven years that Meghan Markle has had to suffer through. There's silence and public abuse towards Meghan and one of their own, Prince Harry, sent a loud message that was heard across the nation. The royal family signaled the blueprint of how to treat people that don't look like them, people who don't understand our cultures, our values, people who need to be put in their place. While many in that same hateful media circus laughed and mocked Prince Harry for raising concerns for the safety of his wife and children in the UK, once again, the good King Harry has spoken the truth. The prince that loves his country so deeply that he went into combat war to protect it and who is willing to hold up a mirror and bring into the light the virus that is rotten at the center of the nation. 
he's labeled a traitor to his race, his country. He loves his country so deeply that he has been attacked from all angles and he still moves forward ahead because he knows the power of the media and it's killing the soul of the nation. Billionaires like Rupert Murdoch, who own significant media assets, have substantially influenced over the dissemination of far-right ideologies. By funding media outlets and political campaigns, these wealthy individuals ensure their interests are protected and their narratives dominate public discourse. This financial backing allow far-right movements to reach a broad audience and gain a political traction. Corruption further undermines democratic institutions and exacerbates social unrest. When politicians and media figures are financially tied to wealthy elites, policies tend to favor the rich, fueling resentment and distrust among the populace. This dynamic creates fertile ground for far-right ideologies to strive. Far-right ideologies are often rooted in a mix of religious fundamentalism and nationalist movements. Historically, these ideologies have justified exclusionary and discriminatory policies. In modern times, they manifest as xenophobia, racism, and a rejection of multiculturalism. Religious narratives, particularly fundamentalist interpretations, are used to promote an, ex a, a, promote an exclusionary vision of society. The recent increase in far-right activities in the UK highlights these ideological underpinning. Research shows a direct link between the government's anti-immigrant rhetoric and the rise in, in far-right engagement with spikes in activity following inflammatory statements by politicians. A significant challenge in combating far-right ideologies is the reluctance of some individuals to accept factual information. Psychological factors such as cognitive um, di dissidents and confirmation bias play a role in this resistance. People tend to accept information that aligns with their pre-existing beliefs and reject anything that contradicts them. So social media exacerbates this phenomena by creating echo chambers while individuals are exposed only to information that reinforces their views. This environment makes it difficult to break through with factual information and encourages the spread of misinformation. This recent violence in England exemplifies the dangerous consequences of far-right misinformation. The riots triggered by the stabbing in Southport, fueled by false claims about the attacker's identity, highlight how quickly misinformation can escalate into violence. Far-right groups mobilize anti-immigrant protests lead into arson attacks on hotels, housing asylum seekers. This unrest underscores the urgent need for accurate information and responsible leadership to counteract the spread of hate. Authorities must address the root causes of these issues, including the role of politicians, media, and wealthy elites in promoting far-right ideologies. The rise of far-right ideologies po po possesses a significant threat to social cohesion and democratic values. Politicians, media moguls, and billionaires must be held accountable for their roles in spreading misinformation and fostering division. Promoting truth and accountability is essential for creating a more inclusive and equitable future. The power of the UK media is vast. 
we've already seen with this new Labour government, where hopes were that they would revive the Levison Inquiry Part 2. It's already been pushed aside. When you have a media environment that continuously malign people, continuously tell on truth about people, when you have a media that has the gall to consistently, over and over, chastise, criticize, condemn, and malign a woman who just recently talked about the abuse that she went through in answering a question that was posed to her by a reporter on a special segment in a show that talked about parents losing their children or child to social media, children who are unliving themselves. And all these reporters, news station, the UK media in general got out of that segment from the Sunday show on CBS. All they got out, out of that entire thing was Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, responding to a question that she was asked about her own experience with mental health and abuse. Continuously, over and over, people go unpunished, continue to have their celebrity elevated, talking about stripping a woman naked on the streets of the United Kingdom and throwing feces at her, talking about her children or her child being compared to a monkey. And you have prominent UK media personalities laughing it off or thinking it means nothing. We have these moronic people who sit behind a desk and say, oh, we've heard enough. That happened five years ago. Why is she talking about that? The dehumanization of people has consequences. The dehumanization of immigrants, people of color, of minorities has consequences. And if you think that the beast will not come for you, think again. Now, my last question is where is this king that's supposed to keep the country together? Where is this head of the nation, the uniqueness of the importance of having the monarchy? Where is the king? Does he not care about the people in his kingdom? <laughs>